Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Monday, August 26, 2016. Uh, let's go over the charts today and look at some levels. Uh, as far as what the markets did, I mean, we had a, a decent update, about 1.5% one and, one and in QQQ, uh, but really nothing technically significant. The story remains the same. We're stuck between... Uh, uh, the, the main levels that we've been trading now, it's exactly, I believe, yeah, today is exactly three weeks of sideways trading. Uh, well, actually, we came down in there. This was the low on Monday, August 5th, so it's really three weeks and a day right there. Uh, trading between 189 and uh, the lows on August 5th, about 179.20 or so. Uh, so that's a bigger picture. A couple levels to watch going forward, of course, uh, are these uptrend lines. We had the you know the primary uptrend line off the lows on December 24th as well as what I call my BOD benefit of the doubt trend line you zoom in real tight so we basically snapped above that one but uh, this was the one I was tracking before so today we close right on it that's a back test so there's a breakdown and a back test um, we'll get to the intraday charts in a second as well as the futures we'll keep this video short by the way uh, but I just want to look at you know what today was and what it wasn't uh, we came up about uh, not even half. We uh, about half, maybe towards that little. We had a late day run up in the close, um, which is just normal position squaring. It, well, I don't believe it was anything news news induced or any uh, anything else other than again position squaring at the last minute from the ETFs and the funds. Uh, so uh, when I looked earlier, most of the day we were a little bit below the 50% retracement or, in other words, the midpoint of Friday's big red candles. So, you know, as much as a 1.5% one, one uh, 1 gain is, it's par for the course. When volatility is high, these daily swings, you know, we had, again, a down day of 3% on Friday. So uh, you really can't take much from that. In, inside day here, this candle was completely inside of, of uh, uh, the candle on Friday. So, again, I don't see anything that uh, changes much here. We're also back to about that midpoint or so of the channel there on QQQ. So uh, let's see what happens tomorrow. Uh, a couple other levels I want to show you. So going back to that, that had the, you know, the trend line again that could do the trick. But until unless we take out these, uh, you know, the 200-day moving average, the exponential moving average on both QQQ and Spire just below in those levels. So anything in that box is going to continue to be noise. Uh, if you're new to trading, if you've traded for a long time, you should be aware of this. This is what happens when you're in a sideways trading range. It's frustrating to both longs and shorts alike. Uh, you go back and forth, back and forth within the range. Some of the moves are a little more predictable based on intraday charts, but today there just wasn't a lot. And of course, there was the whole news thing. Last night, the futures were down pretty good at the open Sunday evening. Uh, and then, of course, Trump, as he does when the markets are sitting, you know, threatening to break major support or going down, fired off, uh, you know, turned around and, you know, spun out a uh, positive tweet on the trade wars. To me, honest to God, it amazes me is why the market still continues to react like this may be, it, it may be real this time around. Um, you know, fool me once, shame on you. you fool me twice, uh, shame on me, that kind of thing. All right, so that's that. Uh, let's look at the 60-minute chart here. You have all these lines, but again, the most important uh, things here, you have a downtrend line right there off the highs in QQQ, and you have this uptrend line off the lows. We had a brief spike. below. actually closed right about on it on, on uh, Friday. And so I posted uh, these charts on the front page this morning. I said uh, on Friday morning on right side of the chart, I posted uh, the this level right here being very important in my opinion 185.95 and uh, that was Friday morning we we're up here I said a break of that level is likely to open the door to the next wave of selling sure enough we took that out and I gave you a comparable level on SPY and we had that flush out move uh, so what I had posted earlier today was and this remains this is why I'm doing the video now we didn't take it out that should be significant resistance it was important support and what I had said in that post earlier today is the fact that when it broke we didn't just limp down through it and kind of move around the fact that we had impulsive selling only helps to further validate that as a, an important support level and you could see again there's a bunch of gaps here that make it so that's three gaps right there four gaps right there a uh, lot of reactions another gap there so again a, a technically significant level which basically uh, tells you that's an uh, important level it's also the midpoint of this this uh, the, um, the triangle right there, the symmetrical triangle. Uh, so uh, that's the level I'm watching now. And until and unless that gets taken out, nothing changes. If we bounce back to it, 
I will tell you right now, and I said this this morning when I made that post, that would be an objective level to short or add on short exposure. Objective doesn't mean it's going to play out, but it just means objective because you can either keep a tight stop somewhat above it, or you still have, I would, you know, preference would be above this level here. That's, you have the downtrend line in that big 189, 38-ish. That's the top of the recent trading range. Uh, and you're talking, you know, percentage-wise, if, if it happened to pop that level, then you're talking a total, you know, it's about one and three quarters to say you give yourself a 2% stop, you know, and if we do break to the downside, my target from this point alone is measured in double digits. So the risk reward right there is uh, well worth it. And again, so that's what when I say objective, yeah, I, you know, I, I speak to probabilities in a whole different term. I can, and a trade can be an objective short. It might not be the highest probability uh, trade, meaning it, you know, some trades have a higher chance of, of succeeding than others um, but when you have a very you know a favorable RR and on top of that I think the probability is good I still favor a break to the downside no mistake in that I thought you know I still figure we'll get some uh, impulsive selling we didn't get it today again with the G7 um, you, you know in the in this you know the tweet coming out from Trump uh, that's held things up so we'll see if it happens tomorrow but until unless it does like I say over and over and over support is support until unless taken out so there it is there's your big number there uh that's what i added on that post this morning this is where i was going with that so we're bounded right now by resistance around 186 and then support at the recent lows here and here we'll turn off all these lines you can even box that range in so the couple ways i had it drawn with the uptrend line like i just showed you but you could also just box in this recent trading range and exclude you know this little blip down below and that's 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 i think the level that'll do the trick it doesn't matter because they come in together so i have the you know horizontal support level here with that line at the bottom of that range and i have a, an uptrend line so this is this is the number this is where i think the uh, impulsive selling will kick in if and when we take it out i still think that'll happen soon uh, soon as in tomorrow um probably wednesday latest um, but if not, you know, we're in this range until we aren't. That's it. And of course, an upside break and a break of that downtrend line would be bullish. So let's look at SPY. Let's, let's just start out with the daily chart like we did on QQQ. And same story, although I did add a, this morning, I added this trend line as well. Uh, so you can see an uptrend line right here comes in. And it's enough reactions when you zoom in nice and tight. You can see multiple reactions uh, off that trend line here. Uh, so I think it's it's one to watch, and it could give us an early one, two, three. Almost almost all these candles here, a good a good percentage of them, have recently tagged that trend line. And then look at that 200-day EMA. Uh, it's just done a great job here on Spy. Uh, you have a total of six different reactions just in the last what is that? I believe 15 or 14 candles there. Uh, one either right on it. That's a candlestick close right on it. You have all these reactions, candlestick, you know, the, the skinny parts, the uh, candlestick shadows, or the bodies right on or above it, multiple reactions there. And uh, so there's a level that wa to watch. And again, you don't short an intraday break. It's a daily chart. You need to see and want to see if you're short or looking to get short a solid uh, candlestick close below that level. Uh, you know, not a you know, three basis point close below it or uh, an intraday break. You know, solid break. Like I like to say, the redder the better. So we'll see. And again, until then, uh, you can't get frustrated. You have a trading plan, whether you're a bull or a bear right now, long or short, or on the sidelines. Uh, you're going to have to let this trading range resolve. That's it's really that simple. And there's the 60-minute chart of SPY, the same levels I posted on the site this morning, along with those QQQ levels. So last Friday, I said, uh, as well that, as that yellow line I had on QQQ, we needed to see a 289.90 or 289.89 break and uh, to trigger the uh, next wave of selling, and that's exactly what happened. We got that big drop down, and it, again, it happened in a waterfall-type fashion, which helps to validate that. And just like QQQ, you know, it's the same a comparable level. You just have a lot of gaps to define that level and a lot of reactions. So that would be, you know, near-term levels we're talking here, living in the world of the 60-minute charts. That's our resistance level. Obviously, near-term bullish doesn't change everything in the longer term. It's just 
kind of will probably thrust us up to the top of this recent trading range. Remember, that line is about the midpoint of the trading range in the midpoint of this triangle pattern here. Uh, so this would be my favorite scenario, and it was this morning. We reversed anywhere from, you know, we traded pretty much sideways all day once the market opened up. We gapped up and really didn't go anywhere, moved around sideways all day. So I think we either resume the downtrend tomorrow or pop up there. And um, you know, if we pop much higher than that, then there's still plenty of overhead resistance. It just means we're going to spend a little more time in this channel. Uh, so here's my primary scenario. And you can see, again, the trend line. Although we have, if I box it in uh, like this, let's take off all the trend lines and box it in. You can see you know, this is pretty much our, our recent trading range on SPY right here with the lows. But there's that uptrend line. So I think that would do the trick. I think that'll give us an early sell signal. Well, you want to be safe, just wait till those lows from August 5th are taken out. But uh, And then, again, you want to see impulsive selling from there, which I think is what we'll get if we get back down there again. Here's a five-minute chart of QQQ, and this is what I was talking about. There's that little last-minute ramp. I mean, we would have closed down, you know, a good part of the today's gains were right at the end. And you don't get that every day, but you do get a lot of days. You can see right here, there's an almost comparable red candle on the close on uh, whatever that was Thursday or so and you look back there's another red can sometimes you get them green sometimes you get them red uh, it's just whatever there's an imbalance there's an order imbalance if there's more sell orders than buy orders again it's these uh, ETFs have to square off and in the funds everything in the last couple minutes of trading when you get those big moves so they really don't mean much there's not a lot of predictive value is what I was trying to get at here there was a red one we did go down the next day but there was a red one we went up the next day there was a red one we gapped up the next day so can't take too much of them and again you know the fact that we are uh, here's the highs and lows I'll show you what I meant about 50 percent so if I put a, a Fibonacci retracement the high on Friday down to the low there's the 50% Fibonacci uh, retracement level right here, this line here. And you can see we didn't even retrace 50% of, of Friday's candle there on QQQ. And finally, futures, if you look at uh, the zoomed in uh, shot here, this is a NASDAQ 60 minute chart. Uh, you know, I boxed it in here. You can see the range. So, uh, you know, there's a couple ways, like I said, you can look at those trend lines. But I think at this point, you know, that was a lot of downside momentum. And once we had, once we overshot that level, we you could see three reactions around this level. So this is what I'm looking at. And you pretty much box in. There's the recent highs. There's the recent lows. Same old, same old. That's the trading range. And uh, we're right back, as you can see, about to the midpoint of that trading range. And as I said, the midpoint of a trading range like this, as well as a price channel, uh, typically acts as support and resistance where you'll see uh, this is now, that was NQ, by the way, guys, the NASDAQ futures. This is the S&P 500 futures. And you can see the same thing here. So there's all your highs. And then cut it in half, put a line right around the middle, and that's about right where we closed today. Or actually, we ramped up a little after the close. And again, like I said uh, last week, you can see, you know, a lot of the times, most of the time when you're up above there, you trade in there. And then when you break down, you shoot down, and then you hit the bottom of the range. So that's what we've been so far trading, either in the top or the bottom. So... Now the way to look at it, we close pretty much at resistance, and that's why I favor um, from here, favor reversal tonight, tomorrow morning, sometime, resume back down, and I suspect that the next time to the bottom will take us out. If things go the other way, we go to the top, then we just have to watch for those resistance levels, the downtrend line, and of course, more importantly, probably the top of this trading range. Until then, more the same, so... Uh, Yep, you can actively trade it, trying to you know game off these you know support and resistance levels, trying to game a bounce or pull back, or just sit tight and wait for a wait for a definitive break, you know above or below to uh, add to your positions or take a position, of course, if you're if you don't like getting caught up in this chop. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.